Hi Chess School students. This video will show you how to use the four main criteria to analyze positions of material equivalence. If you haven't read the material equivalence article, do that before watching this video. Let's get to our example game, which was played by Masters in 2008. We'll go quickly through the opening, as it's not important to our video. d4, g6, c4, bishop g7, knight c3, knight f6, e4, d6, f3. Due to the committal character of the sandwich variation of the King's Indian defense, many positions of material equivalence arrive from this opening. So if you want to increase your ability to assess situations of PME, it's good to study games with this variation of the King's Indian defense. e5, d5, knight a6, an interesting approach, bishop e3, knight h5, queen d2, queen h4 check. It's interesting that this move is usually played with a short castle instead of knight a6, but as you will see, the knight on a6 has a double role. It defends the c7 pawn and is ready to threaten knight b4 and knight c2 at some point. If white plays bishop f2, black may choose to repeat the move with queen f4, bishop e3, queen h4 back. g3, knight takes g3. If h takes g3, then black will win an exchange, taking on h1. So queen f2, pinning the knight. And now a surprise move. Knight takes f1. Black sacrifices the queen for two bishops and a pawn. Queen takes h4, knight takes e3. I chose this game because the position of material equivalence arrives earlier in the game and the rest of the game was played under these circumstances. Let's see how to use the evaluation criteria of PME in this game. Our task is easier here, as we can also use the ideas of employing different positions with castles on different wings. It's very predictable that white will castle long. I will explain later why. The next move, black will grab the c4 pawn, which cannot be defended due to the threat knight c2 check. And due to the sacrificed queen, which you know is valued at nine points, black will have two bishops and two pawns. As we consider the value of one bishop being three points, this means as compensation for the queen, black has eight points. We will consider this PME as the bishops are minor pieces with long range of action, and white's pawn structure places on white squares makes weaknesses on many dark squares. The weaknesses value about one point, which means we have PME. The first criteria is the position of the kings. As black has all the pawns in front of the short castle, while the white king will be forced to castle long where the c-pawn will be missing, we can assume that black's king's safety will be better than white's king's safety. A good question is, is it necessary for white to castle? The answer is yes, because the king in the middle of the board is in reach of black's knights. And the king in the middle also breaks the rook connection. Also, if white castles on the short side, his king will be even more exposed, and black will be able to use the f4 outpost, which we will speak about later. In this case, the evaluation of the king positions also depends on the pawn breakthroughs as we deal with the opponent's castling on different wings. Black must stop the h2, h4, h5 breakthrough by playing himself h7, h5, while f3 to f4 is not so dangerous. In fact, f3 to f4 doesn't open a file against the enemy king, but as a consequence, it increases the activity of the king's Indian dark square bishop from g7. White must be objective and keep the pawns on the queen side in their original positions. You may ask if it's a good idea to let black open the a-file to trade both pair of rooks and then to penetrate with the queen. This is wishful thinking, as black will be the one to choose the moment of when and how his pieces will be deployed when he decides to launch his breakthrough, h5, h4, or b7, b5. And behind the black's pawns, he's able to find ideal squares for his forces. 
so white doesn't have to invite black to open a file on the queen side. The second criteria is about the quality of the minor pieces. In black's case, the bishops are easily handled as bishop g7 uses the h6c1 diagonal and less white uses f3 to f4 as mentioned earlier where black's dark square bishop will use the long diagonal. And the light square bishop will stay on d7 where it defends the c8 h3 diagonal and plays an active role on the d7a4 diagonal. One of the features of this position is the superiority of the black knights over the white knights. The black knights are supported by his eight pawns, which have left white with no outposts. Black can create a good outpost of c5, which is supported by a7a5, while f4 will be used only if white castles short. Otherwise, black will attempt to create peace superiority on the queen side. Black's minor pieces will be coordinated in just six to seven moves, and white will find difficulty finding weaknesses in black's camp. This is another point you should consider when you have the queen. Does she have attacking objectives or not? In this case, it's difficult to find attacking objectives for the white queen. Therefore, black should avoid trading minor or major pieces, as all his pieces are very useful. The third criteria is...